Good morning, adventurers. It is another day here in DC, and I'm just making some last minute modifications to my travel bag for the day. I was deciding that I wanted to go ahead and forgo my body spray. The reason being, I was looking online while waiting for my devices to charge because I'm having some technical difficulties, and noticed that one of the reviews said, no aerosols, no spritzers, no sprays. Apparently, somebody had a traumatic experience. I don't want to be that person who has a traumatic experience, so I'm just going to leave them in the car. This is not the city that you want security called. No, 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 no. So I've got my Metro card. We're about to go hop up onto the platform and ride it one stop further today and check out the Holocaust Museum. Now, uh, today's going to be interesting. I don't know how much we're going to be able to narrate our experience in the Holocaust Museum, so bear with me. This could be a lot of information with some talking over it in a voiceover. I don't know. Now comes the interesting part, finding it. Everything around here is really interesting when it comes to finding things. Woo. After a lot of walking, we made it. Woo. That wind feels good. It's hot today. You enter the museum as a group, first selecting a card and then joining everyone in the elevator. You then make your ascent and your tour begins. From there, it is independent. Don't worry, you can take your time. The person is Hilda. She was 13 when everything started. As soon as the elevator doors open, you are front and center with everything that is Holocaust. The images here are brutal. It's very hard to walk through and there's a lot of information. This is not one that I would advise for children to go to unless their understanding is at a higher level. I saw grown adults in here who had already begun crying and we weren't even one room in. November the 9th, 1938 was a tragic night, later referred to as the Night of the Broken Glass. It was at this time that the Nazis infiltrated many Jewish structures, completely destroying and demolishing many of the pieces which were a part of their culture and their language. They wanted to demoralize the people and create a public spectacle so that the Jewish people would know that they were there and they were not going anywhere. As you can see with that before and after, really terrible things happened. There were fires, there was looting, and there was breaking in. It's not something that's easy on the eyes. And this was just a building, not even the people yet. This section talks about seeking refuge and how the U.S. immigration quota had already been filled so they couldn't take any more Jewish immigrants. And so they had to find other ways to find safety and shelter. When the war began in Germany, it basically took those borders all around Poland and destroyed them. And came in and surrounded Poland on two separate sides. are all of the last names of people who were a portion of those in the Holocaust. So you can find your country and the name and be able to see it on the walls out here. And it walks through this entire area right there. So it lines one whole side. One of the first gruesome acts of the Nazis was they actually went in and killed a lot of handicapped children. They thought that they were inferior and they had something wrong with them, so they wanted to eradicate them and do a cleansing. And that's where all of this cleansing process began. It's really disturbing to know that they would go and just find a bunch of children. Just because they were handicapped or special needs, they were going to not be as important as another person. 
only a short distance away from the hall, you enter this darkened area with video screens and small telephones. Inside each one is a bench and you can click through using a variety of different selections to learn a little bit more about each of the subject matters. Definitely recommend stopping here. It will put things into perspective for future exhibits. That was interesting because it gives you all of the news clippings that go along with it. it tells the story of each individual situation on the schedule. There's five different things on there. So you can learn a lot about the American response, why they felt they didn't need to do more initially. And uh, it kind of puts things into perspective as to how they continued to pull the wool over everyone's eyes in Germany so they could do what they wanted to do. This room is so amazing. As you can see, there are tons of photos and they were for the most part taken by one photographer and they were rounded up and creating this amazing room of all of these people who were affected by these conditions. So when you get into a room and you have that many people looking at you, and you know that each one of them has had to go through this struggle. It's really profound to see their faces in some of their happiest moments, knowing that their worst moments is what defines them and brings them together in the end. At the Holocaust Museum, there are three floors that you will explore. You start out going to the very top and then you work your way down. And through each one of these areas, you have these little viewpoints of what is below. Now we're on the second level going down now. We're about to enter into this next room. Again, I can't express how much it's necessary to see this in person and I hope that you're understanding just the magnitude of this a little bit through what I'm able to show you. I remember growing up reading the diary of Anne Frank and it letting us as children understand a little bit more about the sobriety of what happened during this time. But seeing the actual information in front of you is a lot different than reading a story, a diary. Seeing it in black and white gives it a full perspective. I remember when we read this story initially that Anne was just this normal girl and this terrible thing was happening and yet she persevered and so seeing a little bit more of the normality of her day to day is pretty awesome. stone we just passed over was actually from one of the ghettos in the Jewish area. Another section that was in the same line basically was off limits. So we've taken these pavers and they've placed them back down here to show the significance of the cobblestone versus a wooden footbridge that the Jews were forced to use instead of being able to walk on the street. Each of these screens represents a different community within a community and has unique stories to tell about the violence that happened to them. Even a hospital isn't safe and this is a hospital door from one of the ghettos where they actually went in to round up those who were sick.
Walking through this corridor, you almost get a sickening feeling as you look at these photos. These are photos of the Jews being herded as though they were cattle into overfilled carts with no food, no water, barely enough room to breathe, and then taken off to concentration camps. This was the worst way you could ever possibly treat another human, and it's front and center for all to see. It's absolutely disgusting and disturbing. Can you imagine being in darkness, overcrowded, starving, thirsty, there's no proper toilet, and you're in there through the cold, through the hot, and you're being carted off to a place that you have no idea where you're going. That was pretty much the conditions in these trains, which they called death trains. They were just ferrying those that were displaced to concentration camps so that they could go there to die. After arriving at a concentration camp, off of one of these death trains, people were then further demoralized. Their heads were shaved, their clothes were taken, photographs were taken of them as though they were inmates, as though they'd done something wrong and they hadn't. I can honestly say that after reading about this in history, in every history book I've ever seen, nothing is like experiencing this one room where you go from the mugshots under the gate from a real concentration camp and into a room which is a recreation of some of the most brutal things that you would find at one of these. It's absolutely horrific. And I cannot say to you enough just how much you will learn by visiting this particular museum. This model shows you the different methods. For example, small groups were shot and taken out back, basically. Um, large groups, though, were gassed, and so it walks you through the process of arriving, being stripped of your clothing, and then taken to these large gas chambers in the cremated. This model represents what it might have been like to enter into one of these areas. The gas chambers are overly crowded, in fact. There are guards just standing around watching you go in so that you can then, in turn, be killed. And again, there's nothing good about this. They're taking your clothes, they're taking your dignity. It's all of those things. And this is a model of just how many people they would have in a single room at a time. This site was the last site that a lot of people saw it was a gas chamber door. And as you can see at the bottom, it has some of the different things that they used to create the gases in the gas chamber. It was locked in from the outside using two strong locks, which completely sealed it with hundreds of people in there at a time, and hundreds of people then died. This was a typical bunk at Auschwitz, where, as you can see, it's kind of long, but between five and six people would fit on each one of these at any given time. So over 400 people could be in one room. And this is what a typical barracks looked like. It looks like nothing more than a barn. It's pretty much was it was because the people there had less value than livestock. So it's pretty unfortunate and sad to see some of the things also inside. There's an area that talks about the human experimentation that they would do based on uh, pressure tests and equipment that they would test out. They used the Jews and those who were held there as lab rats because they were free labor, free lab rats. Anything they wanted them to be and there's nothing that they could do about it. We're about to go in this room that is called the Voices of Auschwitz. Um, there's some different pamphlets in here and you can hear the different stories of those who actually were in Auschwitz.
more disturbing, we shaved the heads and bagged it for padding for furniture and mattresses. At one particular place they found over 15,000 pounds of bagged human hair, categorized as though it was a bale of hay or a bag of cotton. As we move to the final floor in the displays, the last area talked about how a lot of times the Germans would then loot the already dead Jews and prisoners of fillings and things like that and they would melt them down and send them off for further profit. And then the shoes, so many shoes. This section of the museum focuses on those who put forth the brave effort to rescue the Jewish people. Seeing the stories on these walls is a little hard to fathom. The first impressions of what they arrived to find, it's unimaginable. These are actual gravestones of those who didn't make it. It's very hard to walk through this area and not have some kind of emotion. Following this area, we move into a memorial area where there is an eternal flame honoring all of those who endured such tragic things. This room is significant. Each one of these areas with candles signifies one of the many camps for which Jewish people were held. It is a somber place, it is a very quiet place, and it is a place of memories and memorials. This is 
one of the interactive opportunities where you can actually find one of these cards and write your personal message and add it to the wall where they collect all of the thoughts of those who have visited and it helps show the lasting impact of places like this. So I think we're going to take a moment and we're going to find one of these cards which most applies to us and write our message. So after getting to the end, you are supposed to turn to the last page of your booklet with your person. It says here that Hinda survived. She was actually liberated by the Soviets in May of 1945 when she was on a death march. So Hinda is my person and that's really moving. This section is the American response to the Holocaust. It's a whole nother section. You don't have to have a ticket for this portion, and it's downstairs. This interactive exhibit you can actually touch the different states you can read an excerpt from their newspaper at that time and by using your very similar growing and shrinking with your hands you can make it larger or smaller so you can read it a little bit more clearly this particular area of the museum does have a slightly different tone than the upper areas this is the American response so you're going to see more things represented through newspapers and also broadcast each section does have a lot of information that you can stop and read, but you can interact with more of the areas in this section. So that means you're going to have more areas to touch and change the visualization. This would be the area I would definitely say would be more compatible with children because it isn't quite as graphic. But there's a lot of information and it is definitely something that you need to check out while you're in the museum. This section actually directly breaks down what we saw in the other part of the museum about how American immigrant visas were topped out and their response as to why and how they improved the situation as they started to realize this was an escalating situation going on. As you can see, there's a whole wall over here, but look at these. These right here actually are part of a graph. It's not just the walls, it's also the floor and the ceilings that have significant things to say in this museum and I think that's what makes it a little unique and different from some of the other museums that we have been to. So it's interesting, there's information literally everywhere. Five different walls in this hall that are parts of the walls of remembrance. They're all tiles that have been done by children. And you know what they say, from the innocence of a child, you can get the most true truth. 
and so that's why those are pretty profound. And in this area, you'll find an audio tour which you can utilize your cell phone, dial a number, and then hold it up to your ear and it'll tell you the different accounts and stories of those who are on the walls around you. Now they have about 10 stops on this little audio tour, a nice comfortable seating area so you can dial the number and then have a seat and then listen. It's a continuation of all of the different things that we've seen both upstairs and on this level. So I hope you enjoyed my visit to the Holocaust Museum. Again, I can't even imagine seeing this from home and it having quite the impact. So you need to go to the Holocaust Museum if possible. I just hope that my video gave you a little insight as to what's available there. And if you did like that video, please leave a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe and check it out on the next episode to find out where I'm going.